Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent role-playing game. This week, let's take a look at something a bit different. Long ago, a certain classic game did much to launch a niche genre of real-time first-person dungeon crawlers that continues in sporadic entries from various series to this very day. This is not that game. However, it is a reasonable remake thereof. Developed and published by Dave Grumble, Super Dungeon Master is available for free on Steam, as well as on itch.io. Super Dungeon Master is a semi-faithful remake of the original late 80s classic in RPG Maker. This means that it forsakes the first-person view for a top-down one. It includes the original levels and characters, the puzzles therein, but also additional characters and areas and quests to offer some new content for fans of the original Dungeon Master to uncover. It also, necessarily, has all new artwork, although done in a style that evokes the original. The storyline is the same as the original. The Grey Lord, a powerful wizard, has vanished, and you, Theron, his apprentice, were slain in the cataclysm that followed. The Grey Lord protected your soul, and only now, much later, are you offered the opportunity to go forth and try to end the chaos brought down by the Cataclysm. Unfortunately, Theron has no body, so his bodiless spirit must go forth to Mount Anias and assemble a party of four heroes from the magic mirrors that have entrapped their souls. The character selection is done in-game, as it was in the original, where you select four pre-made characters from the magic mirrors. Some work better with other characters, and their allies are noted in their description. Each character has its own name, skill, and ability set, a few token pieces of starting equipment, as well as a backstory. They then advance as you explore, solve puzzles, and defeat opponents. Because of the nature of RPG Maker, the gameplay itself does bear some important changes. The maps are all top-down, so additional markers have been added to designate certain hidden items that might otherwise be impossible to locate due to the view. Further, the real-time combat system is retained, but due to the changes of the interface, you can only control one party member at a time. The others are all run by an artificial intelligence, which must be engaged when you're ready for combat. This is actually a good thing, simply because it means you can disengage it when you need to run from a combat, or keep it disengaged to begin with just to bypass some enemies. Due to the change in the interface, you assign skills and items to a set of hotkeys instead of using them with the mouse in real time, and you can instruct an AI to use certain skills so as not to have to trigger them by yourself. You can select between which character is under your direct control at any time, toggling through the party with the push of a button. I actually found that it was more effective to let the AI handle most of the combats, and either focus on playing a support character or taking control of the most wounded character just to keep them out of combat entirely. There's no split between the combat and the exploration modes, so any action you can take in combat, you can take in the rest of the dungeon, and vice versa. Otherwise, interface follows some basic RPG Maker style tropes. Most items can be picked up simply by walking over them, but items inside of other items, like niches on walls and the like, have to be activated to be used. Likewise, this change to an RPG Maker styling means that some quest items and events turn into simple dialogue box options, which can simplify some interactions rather than relying on the old first-person view direct placement method. The switch to two dimensions also makes it far, far easier to navigate the map, as well as to find the solutions to some of the puzzles that, in the original, required far more careful observation. This does make things a little easier for first-time players, but the puzzles are sometimes complex enough that, unless you're a Dungeon Master veteran, there's still some work to be done to solve them. Likewise, the combat, switched to a 2D view, feels a little bit different, but many of the same tile-dancing tactics still work, albeit in a somewhat more agitated and frenzied manner. Much of the puzzle solutions are the same, so even with the added content, it might take a veteran of Dungeon Master only a handful of hours to complete the game. However, those who are new to the series might find this introduction a little bit easier to handle than the old classic game itself. It is a different experience, though, 
So even if this ends up being your introduction to Dungeon Master, if you enjoy it, I do recommend taking a look at the old versions anyway. There are a few alternate game modes available from the main menu, although these aren't so much alternate modes as methods to assemble a party and look at stats or demonstrate the abilities of the game engine itself. You can also get codes for certain pre-assembled parties there too. There's also a little bit more work done on presenting the initial storyline as well, which can make it easier for new players to get into it. Graphically, as I mentioned, the art seems inspired by the original game, but redone with sprite graphics. The style might seem simplistic nowadays, but the original game was relatively simply presented as well. The music isn't half bad, but the sound effect cues are god-awful and might bear some adjustment. So, what did I think about this one? Well, there's two ways to really look at Super Dungeon Master. First is as a standalone game without any knowledge of the source material. The second is as a laborer of love, in an attempt to recreate a classic RPG. In terms of the first point of view, as a standalone game, I'd have to say that it's relatively decent, if only because of the price. Free. It'll provide a few hours of solid gameplay with puzzles that require some thought, and the overall interface is different enough from the other RPG Maker games that it really doesn't feel much like one. The problem is that, while different from the standard RPG Maker game, the gameplay and interface isn't quite as polished enough to really reach the tier of better than your bog standard RPG Maker game. I guess I can only say that it's competent. Fortunately for a free game, competent is all you really need. As for looking at it from a tribute game, I want to say that it fares a little better. I admittedly had a limited playtime with the old Dungeon Master series itself, which I hope to remedy in the future. However, I was recognizing puzzles from what I did play directly ported into this one, and I have to say that they seemed relatively faithful all in all. The different presentation, as I mentioned before, does certainly make it feel like a different game, effectively answering the old question of what Dungeon Master would have been like if it was presented from a top-down view. Personally, I believe it makes it a little bit easier, but it also loses a little bit of the original charm. The game does mention that Chaos Strikes Back, the sequel to the original Dungeon Master, is coming soon, so if that's true, there is that. Is it worth your while? Well, it doesn't cost anything but your time, so it may be worth checking out. At least... It offers a few hours of time-killing dungeon crawling in a relatively competent manner, and sometimes that's all you can really ask for. I'll leave it at that for now. The link will be in the description below. This has been the RPG Crawler with Super Dungeon Master. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content. If you're feeling particularly generous, I do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash rpgcrawler, which goes towards acquiring things for review and helping me upgrade my equipment. Until next time, take care and goodbye.